Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have the pastor come. He's going to introduce our very own brother Daniel. God bless. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're honored. I want to take this time to. I was a leader so that the ministry deserves a good thing. This young man has desired to work with God. And not only that, he has studied, he has studied, and I oftentimes listen to him, you know, lessons and find so much wisdom in this young young man. And I am just privileged to be able to introduce him to everyone and to our family, uh, breaking every shackle of family that's listening via Zoom, and to all that are here and those that are other cities that's listening we want you to know that this young man has not only proven himself but he has sought to serve God in a way the Bible said many are called few are chosen the chosen of God serves God with everything that's in them uh, they don't hesitate they don't mind sacrificing they don't mind giving up themselves and he has shown me that he's willing to give up himself and this is why I'm honored to give him the opportunity to bring his trial message on this evening. And when he comes to us, I want us to receive him and pour out as much as he pours out to us. Let us pour back in the spirit back to him so that he not only feels the love, but he feels the power, the anointing that all of us share that he might be successful. And as he comes, I want you to know that he, he does have a beautiful wife. And she works with him. I mean, I believe she also ministers with him to make him successful in ministry. So on this morning, praise God, and the little one is saying she does too. <laughs> and, and we want you just on this evening to, as he comes, I want you to receive him. I receive him by saying, God bless. God bless. Come on, say, say, God bless. God bless. Brother Damien. Brother Daniel. Daniel. Say it like you really mean it. Say, God bless. God bless. Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel. Now, now, that was good for me, but now say it for the Lord. Say, God, God bless. bless. Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel. By saying, Amen. Amen. Brother Daniel is coming at this time. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all for tuning in on this last Friday of February, yes. also known and honored as our Black History Month. Yes. Tonight is definitely a night that I will never forget. And I would like to first start off by thanking God who kept me from all of the years. But even though when he called me, he didn't answer at that given time. So I thank him for even kept keeping me un, up until now. And I'd like to thank him for our shepherd, man that always working, a laborer, Amen. pastor, T.L. Huey the Great, Amen. for not only allowing this opportunity, for allowing also for my family, my loved ones to come out as we continue to abide and adhere by the CDC guidelines and adhere to social gathering. I'd like to thank him for our praying, beautiful first lady, missionary Martha Huey. I'd also like to thank God for our co-pastor, brother of many hats, co-pastor Ray Wiley, as well as his wife, a sister of many hats, Lady Wiley, as I like to call her, Lady Wisdom. And I thank every leader for their perspective place, especially our shouting, praying, and dancing district missionary, Nancy Hudson. So I thank everyone in their perspective leadership I also would like to thank the woman of my dreams, yeah. my beautiful wife, the one that's walking this journey with me, yes, yes. my queen, to yes. the right and bringing our beautiful princess out on tonight, Serena yes. to the right. I'd like to thank you for my parents that's in coming out into support, our grandparents, aunts and uncle, brothers and sisters, as well as our beautiful God children. And now that that's out of the way, I want to shift the focus on what you all have been tuning in for and what everyone came out tonight for. Tonight is a message to encourage and strengthen our faith. We've been dealing with so much that it may cause us to question our faith and sometimes lose our faith. Mm -hmm. We're coming along a year where we've been in a COVID pandemic. Yeah. A year away from loved ones, a year away from friends. 
We, come, we have loved ones that have been hospitalized. We have loved ones that died. And we are not able to visit them in the hospital. We're not able to give them a homegoing celebration as we should. We've had, we're dealing with racial unrest. We're dealing with President creating a delusional terrorist group convincing them he's the winner. We've had America prove that the president can incite a rival and get away with it, placing political parties over principles. All right. We've had America show blue lives only matter in response to Black Lives Matter. We're dealing with the opioid crisis and an increasing in drug overdose. We're dealing with youth mental health worsening, suicide ideation among adults increasing, and yet there's still an unmet need for mental health treatment among youth and adults. We're dealing with a slumping economy. We're dealing with a bidding war in the housing market. We're dealing with bricks and mortars closing, higher unemployment rates, people feeling helpless, hopeless, and some even homeless. Many have been working hard for a solution and finding themselves unsuccessful. So I want to encourage you on tonight in discussing a man who was working hard all night to find a solution and unsuccessful doing it his way. But oh, how things changed when he listened to Jesus and obeyed his word. I'm talking about a famous fisherman who was the most prominent of Jesus' 12 disciples, who we know as Simon Peter. So if you would, please turn with me and follow me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, starting at the first verse and concluding at the seventh verse. And I give you all time to follow me along with the word of God. Make sure that I'm not making up anything. <laughs> and the word reads as thus. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for it dropped. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the nets. And when they had, did, had this done, then enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Um, the title for tonight will be coming from that fifth verse. It says, Master, we have taught all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Our title for my title for tonight is Nevertheless Faith. If I could use for a theme, it would be the blessing of God's people who listen and obey. Amen. Amen. Right, Most gracious and eternal God, I thank you for this opportunity to use me as a willing vessel. Lord, I ask that you remove Damien's thought and allow the Holy Spirit to have its way. Lord, allow the message not to oppress or entertain your people, but serve a purpose of encouragement or conviction and continue to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto you, which is by reasonable service. Lord, allow your word to reveal any areas of our lives that may not be in submission to you or your word. Father God, I bind up any distraction or interference on tonight. Lord, I pray that your people will allow the Holy Spirit to help them hear from you. Believe in your word and obey your word. Lord, I ask all these things be done. It's in your son Jesus' name. Do pray. Amen. 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 So we're coming out of the gospel of Luke. And Luke is the longest gospel in the New Testament. The author of Luke is the physician himself, which considerable evidence points to Luke, at the, Luke as the author. And much of that proof can be found in the book of Acts which identifies itself as a sequel to Luke. And that can be found in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The Gospel of Luke is the longest book in the New Testament, focuses on the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Luke emphasizes the universal importance of his life and message. This message and purpose of Luke is designed to strengthen the faith of believers 
and to challenge the misconception of unbelief, especially those of a Greek background. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier, my message is to encourage and strengthen the faith of believers during such time as this. And just to give a background of what's going on in the text or before what happened in the text, as we know, uh, for those that really studied the word, most of Jesus' ministry was around the lake of Genesaret, also known as the Sea of Galilee, which is located some 60 miles north of Jerusalem. The Sea of Galilee was the focus of Galilee's wealth, about nine cities with a population of 15,000 or more. Capernaum is where a lot of his, his, his miracles happen as well, but this Capernaum is the home of Simon and Andrew. And before in Luke, the Lord just, the Lord Jesus was in the synagogues at Capernaum in which he taught and healed many people who came to him on the Sabbath. We know that a Sabbath is a day that you shouldn't work, but Jesus was healing. He was working for the Lord. And Jesus, so Jesus had left the synagogue and went into Simon's house to heal his mother-in-law. And after these mighty works, Jesus slipped away after he's done great things. He slipped away to go into a deserted place to pray. And the disciples find him there and, and they talk to him about how the people wanted him to stay there, how many people it was that wanted him to stay there. But Jesus told him that he had to go, he had to go into the other cities to preach the gospel for what he came for. So Jesus left Capernaum to preach in other city. His first stop was at the Sea of Galilee, where he makes contact with the crowd of people and with some of the men whom he would call to be his disciple. A little disclaimer, this event is not parallel to the one described in the, the gospel, the synopt synoptic gospels of Matthew and Mark. And those account, Peter and Andrew were busy fishing, but in this account, they had fish all night and caught nothing and were washing their nets. You know, at, when reading this, I had to say, man, if I was fishing all night and caught nothing, I probably would be selling my nets, not washing them to get ready to go out again. But a true fisherman don't quit. You will learn this fisherman had nevertheless faith. So we'll be talking to you again in regards to nevertheless faith. There are two key points. First, I'd like to break down how do we attain nevertheless faith. First, we get in his presence. And the second, we be a student willing to listen and learn. But to go off the first point, get in his presence. There in that first verse, it said, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, pressed upon him to hear the word of God, pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Genesaret. So Hebrews 11 and 1 tell us that faith comes, excuse me, Hebrews 11 and 1 tell us that now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence, things not seen. Romans 10 and 17 teaches us that so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. These people, although there was a 15,000 crowd and the message has gone out in the cities and in the fields about the miracles that Jesus was doing, they wanted to press and get into the presence of God and they wanted to hear the word. They wanted to see what else could they gain with their faith increase. We have a population here in the United States of 330 million people here. We have a world population of 7.5 billion people here. So just as they, they had a population of 15,000, we have to press and to get into his presence. Matthew 6 and 33 teaches us that seek he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. I'm dealing with how do we attain nevertheless faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one, get in his presence. Get in his presence. And then the second point, be a student willing to listen and learn. If you follow me to that second verse, uh, it says, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and were washing their nets. And that third verse says, and he entered into the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. He sat down and talked to people out of the ship. Again, that second point is how we obtain nevertheless faith. Be a student willing to listen and learn. Notice how the Lord used Simon Boat as a pulpit. This proves that God can use whatever we have to glorify him. If we give all our promise and possessions to the Savior, he uses them and rewards us too. Yeah. 
His mission was not to call others from a single place, but to go to people throughout Judea where they worked, where they lived, where they studied, and call them as they were, where they were. Watch this. Jesus used Simon's ship as a pulpit, and today we're using pulpits, Facebook, Zoom, in the cities, in the field, all social media platforms as a ship. You may be asking how. See, Simon's ship became a place to give out the word of God and attempt to catch a fish. Today we're using the pulpit, we're using Zoom, we're using social media platforms, the street corners, in the cities, and in the field as a ship, as a boat, to give out the word of God and attempt to catch fish. Fishes. We know that when, when Simon later followed Jesus, he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of many men. And so here today we are fishers, we are fishers of many men. So we're using the, the pool pit as a boat to fish for men by giving the word of God. Amen. In corporate America, we're still talking about how to tame nevertheless faith. Get into his presence. Be a student willing to listen and learn. In corporate America, Pastor gave the illustration or described how we first met. That was when I was in, in corporate America before starting my business and was interviewing candidates. And there's three things that we look for in each candidate that you cannot teach. And there's no particular order. One of those things was student mentality. So you got to have a student mentality willing to always be able, coachable and teachable in order to grow. The second one of those characteristics was work ethic. Here, Simon worked at the, this, the scripture tells us that he worked all night. So he had the work ethic. He had the student mentality because after he cleaned his nets, he still get, got in the boat and thrust out a little, as Jesus said. Mm -hmm. That third characteristic is positive attitude. You can't teach positive attitude. Simon was finished. He's a fisherman. Yet still, he obeyed Jesus' word. He had a positive attitude about things. He said, in that fifth verse, he said unto Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. That's a positive attitude. So Simon here had all the characteristics to make it in corporate America. So Jesus already was calling him. He was, the multitude he was teaching, but he was focused on Simon. If you know that there was two boats, but he took Simon's boat. See, Jesus is intentional. Although there's 7.5 billion people on this world, He's focusing on you. Amen. 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 Come on now. All right. So we're talking about nevertheless faith. Yes. How do we attain nevertheless faith? We get into his presence. We be a student willing to listen and learn. Now I want to shift. What could we expect after attaining nevertheless faith? Two points. We can expect to exercise our faith. Watch this. In that fifth verse, the fifth verse says, and starting at the fourth, the fourth verse, excuse me. Now, when he had left speaking, so that's after Jesus been teaching. When he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. If you go into another translation, that, that drop means for a catch, to catch fish. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. <clears throat> you expected to exercise your faith. Jesus was a carpenter by trade. Mm -hmm. What do carpenters know about fishing? Mm -hmm. It's a well-known fact that in Galilee, the best time to go fishing was at night in the shallow water. Here, Jesus, a carpenter, telling him to go fishing in the daytime in the deep water. See, what Jesus asked Simon to do was contrary to all his training and teaching as a fisherman, but yet still Simon obeyed. The key was his faith, the word of God. Nevertheless, at thy word. We have to be like, oh no, we unsuccessful. know how to do it. We have to trust the word and obey him. Said, nevertheless, at thy word. Simon, Luke used the word master here when, when Simon was addressing Jesus. Master is a great skill, one of great skill. 
And Luke was the only one that used this, and it has a variety of meanings, which all speak to authority. A bishop, a pastor, a magistrate, mayor of a city, governor of a state. They all speak to authority. So it goes to show that although Jesus was a, a carpenter by trade, Simon knew him of authority because he just had healed his mother-in-law. So that's not the first encounter that he came he into right. with Jesus. He knows the, the, the scripture tells us that he, the, the news has spread all throughout the cities and in the fields about what Jesus has done. He was right. killing people on the Sabbath. So this is not the first encounter. The world knew yeah, right. Jesus yeah. as a carpenter. All right. Simon knew him as master. Hey, come on, submitting to authority. We have to submit to the authority yeah. in today's society. Right. We have to submit to our bishops. We have to submit to our pastors. We have to submit to authority, although they're not in the, that field that we're in. I'm in the insurance. They may not know insurance, but he's my pastor. If he tells me something about insurance, I'm going to listen. Because God may have showed him something to tell me that I haven't seen. So I have to submit to authority. So Peter was, a, was willing, willing to submit to authority of Jesus, even though he did not understand all the Lord was doing. And remember, a great crowd was watching from the shore. There's almost 3 billion people on Facebook. That's a great crowd watching, but Jesus is dealing with you. And people are watching how you handle the pandemic, how you handle everything around. And Jesus is, is, is telling you his word, so we have to listen and obey. So what's his word? Just like Simon, we've been toiling all night, and toiling means working hard. For so long, and it seems like there's no solution. We've been going through so much, and many people are on so many drugs, fish. Fishing for healing or deliverance. Fishing for hope, joy, or love. Fishing for financial increase or discernment. Fishing for family unity, growing their ministry. Whatever you have been fishing for, be like Simon. All right. Clean your nets and try listening to his word. We must stand on his word because in Hebrews 13 and 7 it says that Jesus is the same Yesterday, today, and forevermore. Right. What that means? If he done it before, he'll do it again. Yeah. If he did it for Sally, he can do it for me. Right. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. We have to stand on his word. Yeah. No matter what's going on, we have to have that nevertheless faith. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got more bills than money. The key is obeying his word. What's his word? Philippians 4, 19 said, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. Racial tension on display. We must stand on his word. What's his word? John 16 and 33 says, in the world you should have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Yeah. You've been diagnosed with medical condition. We have to stand on his word. What's his word? In Isaiah 53 and 5, it says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. The king is obeying his word. With anxiety and sexual stress, we have to stand on his word. What's his word? Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You may have been doubting yourself by starting ministry, by starting that business, by changing job, by going to approach your wife or your spouse. You have to stand on his word. What's his word? Psalms 139 and 14 says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Come on, son. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. Yeah. Once you got into his presence, to hear the word of God, your faith continues to increase as you are still in listening and obeying his word. Then you're going to expect to exercise the faith. The key is having faith in his word. What's his word? It was his word in Matthew 24 and 35 that says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. It's his word in Genesis 1 and 3 that said, let there be light and light there was. It was his word in Genesis 1, 26 and 27 that said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. It was his word in 8, 
to Abram saying, behold, my covenant is with you. You shall be a father of many nations. No longer will your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. It was his word in Exodus 14 and 16 to Moses that said, lift up your rod and yeah. stretch out your hand yeah. over the sea and divide it. And the scripture tells us Moses stretch out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night and made the sea into dry land yeah. and waters were divided. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. Come on. Yeah. What's his word? Yeah. It was his word in Genesis 28 and 13 to Jacob saying, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. It was his word in Jeremiah 1 and 5 that says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou coming forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. This is word in Isaiah 40 and 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. This is word in Isaiah 40 and 29. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. This is word in Mark 1 and 25 that rebuke the unclean spirit saying sternly be quiet come out of him <laughs> and the spirit left him it was his word word in mark 1 and 41 that cleanses the leper saying i am willing be cleansed and as soon as he had spoken immediately the leprosy left him and he was clean it was his word in mark 2 and 11 that healed the paralytic by saying i say to you arise Take up your bed and go to your house. Amen. It was his word in Matthew 8 and 13 that heals a centurion servant that said, go your way as you have believed, so let it be done to you. And his servant was healed that same hour. It was his word in Psalms 37 and 4 that says, if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. What that mean? Meaning that he not only give you what you need, but he'll give you what you want. Amen. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. This is what you can expect. Once you have got into his presence yeah. to hear the word of God, once you have been a student listening, you can expect to exercise the faith. Mm -hmm. As you see here, Jesus taught, had him exercising his faith. Immediately, he told him to let down his neck. Mm -hmm. So the last point of what you can expect, after exercising your faith, my, 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 you can expect a great blessing. To read with me this six and seven verse it says and when they had this done then closed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break and they beckon unto their partners meaning they call and signal to their partners they needed help which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both of the ships so that they began to sink See, Simon was doing it his way that he know how to do. Yes, he leaned onto his own understanding, thinking he know the best time to go fishing, thinking he had the best equipment preparing to fish, the best nets. He had big enough help, a big enough boat, and enough help. He, see, Jesus told Simon exactly where to fish and to find plenty of fish after the night that they've been working all night and was unsuccessful. This is a reminder that the Lord is our mission, meaning that he's all knowing. Simon's problem changed from cleaning the nets so that it would not break, because as fishermen, you had to clean to get the debris off so that the fishes wouldn't see. So he went from cleaning the net for the next time he fished to that net beginning to break and ships beginning to sink from too many fishes. Oh, how delightful it is to have problems of great success from obeying God's word opposed to the little success from leaning on our own understanding. Oh I'm yes. talking about nevertheless faith. Yes. Nevertheless faith. Get into his presence. Yes. Be a student willing to listen and learn. Mm -hmm. And then what can you expect? Mm -hmm. You can expect to exercise your faith. Mm -hmm. After you exercise your faith, you can expect a great blessing. So the word that came, it came for me first. I've been through the whole pandemic. I remember there was a question that was asked. How, how are you doing during this pandemic on our, on our Wednesday blast? Just to check in. And, and many of the answers were saying that, hey, I've been getting into the presence of God. I've been growing my relationship closer with him. And it's been the same for me. I've been in his presence. I've been a student listening and obeying. And then God bring a situation that it was time to exercise my faith. Mm -hmm. I remember it's almost, it, 
Next month, it will be a year. I received the text. And the text was asking me, say, Cuzzo, could you pray for me? This is one of my favorite relatives. She was pregnant and she was experiencing headaches, migraines, back problems, chest hurting. She said that she went to the doctor. It wasn't asthma because we both grew up with asthma. She got tested. It wasn't the flu. So they were waiting for the COVID-19 test to come back. And she asked to pray for me. And I remember my grandfather said, he taught me, he said, when somebody come and ask you to pray, that's a privilege and an honor because that means that they believe it on you to get a word through to their God. That says something about your faith right there. Right. Yes. So I asked my wife. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. We're talking about obeying his word. I went to my wife. Say, baby, this is what's going on. I'm asking for permission to go on fast. Because when the disciples came to Jesus, they said, why could we do it? He said, these things come by praying and fasting. Many of times we pray, but we don't fast. When we fast, it shows a whole total different dedication that we want to get this request answered. Mm -hmm. So my wife gave permission. I then called my pastor. I told him what was going on. He gave me his blessing. Not only did he gave me his blessing, he prayed with me on the phone before leaving off. So going on a three-day prayer, a prayer of fast. I was in the same room where I was preparing the sermon, and I spoke those things into existence because his word is saying, speak those things as though they were not. Mm -hmm. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men. The things that God has prepared, is, the word says prepared, past tense. So I spoke those things into existence. Father, you say when two or three come together and touch and agree, it shall come to pass. Father, I'm praying for complete healing. Whatever the doctors say, I know you as a healer. I know you as a doctor. Speaking those things into existence, the same word, because he gave us power to speak those things. He gave us dominion and power, and the power of life and death is in the tongue. Ask the Lord to heal her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Take away the headaches, the heartaches, the back pain. Lord, make sure that the baby is safe. Because my wife and I, we not too long ago experienced a miscarriage. We experienced difficulties with having our beautiful serenity. So I know that a child needs his mother and a mother needs his child. So I was praying and I was fasting. And the report came back. Baby test. Negative. I'm still talking about nevertheless faith. Expecting to exercise your faith and then expecting the great blessings from you. She had to go through and get immediate surgery so to get the baby out to make sure it's safe. Her test came back positive. Nevertheless, nevertheless, faith. We still standing on the word, believing God healed her. Because when you're a believer, you're good no matter what happens. See, if I don't catch COVID, He's protected me. If I catch it and I get rid of it, he's healed. If I catch it and I die from it, I'm with him. So no matter what happens, I'm good as a believer because we know that this is not our home. For our home is in heaven. Amen. So her spouse got tested. His test came back negative. In the long story short, she's still here today. She's a mother. First time mother. I'm talking about after you exercise your faith, you can expect blessings, great blessings. Then later on in the year, I tell you, we've been going through so much. This word is to encourage our strengthen our faith. Later on in the year, got a call to sense. 
aunt is in pain, we're gonna get her checked out, everything is fine. You know, has an obsessed, we're gonna get it checked out. Went to the hospital, got things checked out. One check out became some days. And this aunt is a paternal mother to me. And so I got another call from a relative that says, hey, this is what happened. And I know what this what they tell you, but I've been in the hospital. This is what's really going on. Mama is coming along. She got food around her home. So they're doing some tests. They, they're going to study to see what's going on. Flu is not leaving the body. Then we get a, a call that says they had to resuscitate her, resuscitate her. And she's in the ICU. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. No matter what's going on, we have to stand on this word, nevertheless faith. Because we've got to expect to exercise our faith. So I began to pray. I said, I see you. I began to do what I know to do. Okay. She's not speaking verbally, but she can hear to her response. So immediately the family, we got on, we're talking about the social media platforms. Immediately we all got on Google Duo and we had a family prayer. Family prayer. And it spoke those things. God, just as you put Adam in deep sleep to form something great from him. Lord, why my aunt is in sleep. I know that you're doing a great thing with her. Oh, you created new blood cells in her. Out with the old, in with the new. Lord, you renew her mind, her spirit, Lord. Lord, I'm asking you to breathe in her nostril, Lord, that her lungs are open. The same breath that you breathe into the dust that made a soap. Breathe into it. God is our creator. So we have to speak those things. So allow the kidney to function just as you created. Allow the heart to function just as you created. Allow the mind and cell to function just as you created. <laughs> we was on the phone. I got another call that they had resuscitated her again. We believe in nevertheless faith. You got to expect to exercise that faith. So if you are exercising faith, we're praying, we're praying. God turning around. She's now up. She's talking. She's speaking. They find where the flu was in. They find how to get the flu out of her. She was recovering. The doctors, they call her the miracle patient. They have never uh, seen anyone recover so fast. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. Oh, yeah. And so they begin to do some tests on her. She's up now. She's talking. I guess one of the doctors or surgeon told her that, hey, we got to do something with your heart. Somebody put a buzz in her head that she had a bad heart. So Nevertheless, so, I said, I said, and she, so she went in a stage of depression. I said, I, I need to speak with her. I need to let her hear the word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. She didn't have a bad heart. Nothing was wrong with her heart. That was the enemy putting a trick in her head, a buzz in her head. But we all got around and we prayed with her. We, we encouraged her. Oh, we gonna, after this pandemic, we're going to have things given like no other. Uplifting her. Speaking the word into her. And I'm close. She's out in the hospital. And I remember when I told her about this event. Because I prayed. And the word says, ask these things be done. Long they line up with my will. So some of the words that I prayed was, God deliver her, keep her. Hear a lot. And I didn't want to be selfish about it. So I said, Lord, when you keep her, Lord, you're keeping her for her grandchildren to know that you're a God. Just as you're a God of Abraham, Moses, and Isaac, that the people know you are. You are God of my aunt. 
to allow the people to turn from their wicked ways, Lord, not just this time, but every time, Lord, that you be glorified, Lord. This is an opportunity for you to show up and show out that you're still God. So I wanted to line up with his will. She said unto me after telling about this event, talking about expected exercise. She said, Lord, is this why you kept me hollering? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. 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 Those words are so deep. This is why you kept me. Hallelujah. I'm living to see my nephew, my son, answering the call. I'm talking about nevertheless faith. So, no matter what's going on, you have to listen. If Simon was to not obey the first single and insignificant command, he would have never participated in a miracle. Therefore, just as Simon, we must have nevertheless faith. Amen. We must get in his presence, be a student willing to listen and learn. And then what could we expect? We can expect to exercise our faith, and we can expect a great blessing. Thank you. My God, my God, my God. Nevertheless, I want you to know something. Oftentimes, when we hear the word of God that there's always something that's going to penetrate mm -hmm. into our hearts. And on this evening, we've heard a word from the Lord. I am grateful for God using Brother Damien. And from this point forward, we will, at uh, the shackle, know him not as Brother Damien, but as Minister David Amen. 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 And in doing so, this is not just for him, but it is for every person that has attached themselves to him, be it through the family, be it through ministry, be it through his job, however they have come in contact with him, he has been a light unto them. And one of the things that I want to say to Damien is this is a serious time. By you accepting this call, it is not to be taken lightly. You see, becoming a minister is more than just wearing a title. Becoming a minister means you're becoming a servant. That means that we die unto ourselves and we surrender ourselves totally to God. Amen. Tonight you have taken that first step, although you've taken many steps toward tonight. But tonight you've taken the first step of a total acknowledgement. Mm. Therefore, from this point forward, God is going to hold you accountable yes, sir. for your lack of not serving. Mm. That means you have to pour all that you have into him now. And, and believe me, I'm not going to cut you no slack. <laughs> because I expect nothing but the best out of you. And being a minister means that you want to give your best. So let me tell you this, and I'm going to say to you, preach the message nevertheless. I want you to hold that word in your hand. Remember the first message I ever preached. I want you to hold that one. Because there are going to come times you're going to have to say nevertheless. Amen. Amen. Even though they are beating me up, mm -hmm. even though they're talking about me, even though they're knocking me down, even though I, I don't seem like I'm going to make it, you're going to have to grab hold to nevertheless. Because it's the nevertheless faith that's going to carry you through your storms. And as you go through life, son, accept the fact that from this point forward, you're going to always have to remember that I have to hold on to that nevertheless, no matter what happens, what goes down, what comes at me, or how people approach me, I've got to remember that I've been called of God to serve. Mm -hmm. So, son, I want to anoint you tonight 
And I know that we're in a pandemic, and, and I know that it's it's a time that we don't get to touch one another. But I want to anoint you because I want nothing but God's favor and blessings to be upon you. Mm. And so I want you to just stay right here if you would. And I want somebody to say, Lord, Lord, Lord continue to use it. Continue, continue to use it. I don't want you to just be a one-time <laughs> gospel word. I want you to be able to take the word and remember, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. And remember, study to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word. Amen. As long as you stay in God's word, and as long as you do what God has directed, you will not be a disappointment to the kingdom of God. Amen. Many have come this way, but so many have failed. Don't allow anyone to make you a statistic. That's right. But allow yourself to be anointed and used of God. Father, from the crown of his head, even unto the soles of his feet, I want you to anoint this young man, God, your man's servant. Use him, God, everywhere he goes, that he might be a witness. To let dying men and women everywhere know that you call him for such a time as this, that they might be delivered from every sin. Touch him now, God. Please, God. Yes. Touch him now in a mighty way. Anoint his hands, God. Anoint them, Lord, that as he lay hands and he holds people's hands, God, that they might feel the anointing flowing through him. Yes. Let a man be one, God. Being zealous over the word, but let him be a doer and a performer of the word. And everything he does, God, it will be done according to your word, according to your proof. Use him mightily and keep him, God. Keep him with a sober mind. Keep him with a righteous spirit, God. Let your anointing go through him from the crown of his head. Even unto the soles of his feet. Yeah, you said the steps of a good man is ordered by you. God ordered his steps. That he might walk up right before you and be holy in your sight. Use him mightily. Yes. And if you do this, oh God, we are so mindful to praise you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise God, son. We honor God. And you may be seated. And we're going to prepare for this epistle. But I want to say that. We were praying to have your license back from the National Church by now, but because of the pandemic, it has been shut down, so everybody's working from home. And so the license has not yet arrived, but we will be hitting it shortly, and as soon as we get it, I will sign it and then give it to you so you can hang it in your home. Amen. And so anyone coming in, they can see that you are truly a minister of God, and they know that you're with a great church, the church of God in Christ. We love you in the Lord. We love your beautiful wife. I just want you to do me a favor, if you would. I just want you to bear my hand right quick. I hear you, God. I hear you. I hear you, God. He's the one that God called, but you're the one that God's given to help him serve God. The way that God wants him to say. No matter what you think, he's still the man that God called. No matter how he feels, he's still the man that God called. Because so there are going to be days and he's going to wake up and he's going to say, honey, I don't know if I'm going to do this. And you're going to have to tell him, but you said God called you. So you might as well get on about God's business. Push him when he don't want to be pushed. Make him do what he don't want to do. When he know you know he's supposed to be doing it because God wants to do so. And so I give you this charge. I give you this charge. Be the woman that you said you would be in good times, bad times. Good days, bad days. Be the same woman about him serving God. Because that's what he's going to be as time comes and as he grows in the Lord and in his ministry. God is going to use both of you. Amen. Amen. 
God is, I want to hear you, I hear you, God, God's going to use both of you. So get ready to be used for the Lord. Amen. Because you have a ministry also. A ministry to show other young women how godly women live. So prepare yourself for great kingdom exploits. Brother Damien, you got a beautiful wife. You do me a favor, just give her a hug and just tell her you love her. Amen. Yes, sir, my God, we thank God for each of you this evening. Listen, say to God, would you do me a favor? This is not normal. But I want every person in here, I want you to point your right hand, the right hand of blessings at Brother Damien right now. And I want you to say with me, say, Lord, Lord, from this night forward, let every one of his steps be anointed and blessed. Give him the desires of his heart that he might serve you with everything that might be good. Now, if you really believe that, shout hallelujah. We thank God for you, Brother Damien. I know this is the hour we're getting ready to let you go, but uh, is there anything, praise God, ill while you'd like to say to the brother Damien? Amen, 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 amen. We definitely thank God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. As I'm as I watch Brother Damien bring, bring forth the word, I go back and I was looking at three generations of preachers. Elder Hugh is old enough to be my father. And I'm old enough to so preach this and my God is said, Do I have something pastor said that stands out for this generation? For this generation. So I want to encourage you, my brother, my brother. I call him I call him my big son. Amen. It's funny. But I want to encourage him to continue to study God's word. Don't deviate from it, but stay in his word. We are super proud of you and what God is yet doing in your life. I'm excited because we have conversations weekly and just to see your growth, amen, and God's going to take you further. And Pastor, as Pastor uh, mentioned earlier, how you went to Pastor and Pastor already had the discernment. He was just waiting on you. So he knows. And, and so when God has called you to do this, man, and that now that you're actually walking in it, uh, we're just so super excited for you. And so I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. And we, as you can see here, you have the church family here on the screens here. And they, man, they all tuned in and dialed in and to, to encourage you. And the best is yet to come as we continue to move forward in ministry. God bless you. God bless you. And I love you. Thanks, God. We thank God for, for that. And we, I was just looking at all the people that have tuned in just to hear and see you on this evening, and we're just grateful to God for them. But before we dismiss, first lady, is there anything you'd like to say to Brother Damien? Oh, no more Brother Damien. <laughs> Minister Damien. <laughs> <laughs> Minister right. Minister right. Minister right. No more Brother Damien. Ah, see, see, see. So we just want to allow. Uh, all of you just and we want to thank the family for coming and sharing with Brother Damien or Minister Damien on this evening. I'm going to have to use that myself. <laughs> but, uh, but I trust I can go in front. <laughs> so but, but we're going we're gonna to be honoring uh, we honor God for you. Uh, we just want you to be encouraged. Your family came great distance to hear and to see you. And so we know they love you. They love your wife and they just want to be a part of your growth in the ministry. So as we go from here, I want you to wave at everybody that's looking at you on, on, on Facebook, and, and I want them to see that you are how appreciative you are of them. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and then waving back at you. Praise the Lord. So we, and we know, if I'm not mistaken, is not your former pastor up there? I thought I saw... Uh, I thought I saw... Is this him here? Randy? No, that's my classmate. That's your classmate. Oh, yes, praise God. God. Okay. All right. Well, we thank God for, uh, for, for Pastor Randy being with us on this evening. Well, thanks to God, I believe that we've come to the close of the whole matter. Is everybody happy? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let us stand to our feet. I'm going to dismiss us up while let the church say amen. Let the 